We are continuing with systems of linear equations. We are finding a way to solve systems of linear equations using Gaussian elimination or Gauss-Jordan elimination. So again, we're going to start with a small system, two equations and two unknowns. And I've said before that there are other ways to solve these. But in this section, teaching Gaussian elimination, we're teaching a specific method. So it's important to follow the method, even if you can see other ways of solving it. It's not about getting to the answer. It's about the process to get to the answer. So Gaussian elimination is very rigid in what it prescribes. But the nice thing is it always works out. Whether you've got a unique solution, an infinite number of solutions or no solutions, the process works. So let's get going. The first thing we do is we rewrite our system in an augmented coefficient matrix. 2, 3, 3 minus 1, that's the coefficient matrix, and we augment it with 5 and 13. You do not need this line here, but it's just good to remember that that's what happens on the other side of the equal sign. All right, so why do we do this? Firstly, so there's less writing. I don't have to write x1, x2 every time, and we can use operations on matrices to help us. So it's just a little bit simpler. So the first thing we do, we need a leading one. Why do we want that? Because to solve this system, in the end, I want x1 equal to, and I want a number, and I want x2 equal to, and a number. So what that means, I want one x1, and I want no x2s in that line, and I want zero x1s in the second row, and I want one x2. So that's where we're going with all the ones and zeros. So the, that's our aim, is to solve for x1 and x2, and this is the process we follow. So we're very strict about our process and about our procedure. So let us get started. To get a leading one in row one, column one, we only work with that row. We don't use the other row to get a one there. We just use that row and we multiply it with an appropriate number. In this case, I multiply it with the half to get a one there. So the whole row gets multiplied by a half. So it's one, three over two, five over two. Row 2 stays the same, 3 minus 1, 13. Right, our next step is to get a 0 below it. So I want that 3 to be a 0, so I want to do something with row 2. Row 2, and yet again, just notice these are arrows, and I'm writing what I'm doing above the arrow or below the arrow. But this is not an equal sign. These equal, Even though the systems have the same solution, these matrices are not equal. So now I'm doing something to row 2 to get that to be a zero. So row one stays the same. Now I'm doing something with row two. I want a zero over there. Why do I want to use the leading one? So to get a zero, we use the leading one we just generated. So what must I add to three to get zero? I need to add minus three. So I'm going to add minus three times row one to row two. So three plus minus three is zero. Minus one plus minus three times 3 over 2, so it's minus 1 minus 9 over 2, so it's minus 11 over 2. 13 minus 15 over 2, so 13 is 26 minus 15 over 2 gives me 11 over 2. All right, things are looking better already. Now, I'm done with my first column. I've got a leading 1 and a 0, so I'm done with that column. I'm happy with that column. I'm moving on to my second column. I need a leading 1 in my second column. Where do I want it? In the second row, if all possible. So we want that to be a leading 1. So I'm going to take row 2 and multiply. To get a leading 1, we multiply the row with the correct number. We don't use other rows to get leading 1s, the row itself. So I'm multiplying it with minus 2 over 11. Row 1 stays the same. And row 2, we're multiplying with minus 2 over 11. So that gives me 0, 1, minus 1. So we can already see we've got our x2 value because this second row in the matrix, if I had to write it as, a, as an equation, it's 0, x1 plus x2 gives me minus 1. So I already have the x2 value. Now we next step, we've got our leading 1 in the second column, so I want a 0 above it. So I'm going to use the leading 1. So I'm going to take row 1 and add some multiple of row 2 to it. What multiple? Well, I want to get a 0 there. So what must I add to 3 over 2? Minus 3 over 2 gets me to 0. So row 2 stays the same. Row 1 is then 1, 0. What am I doing? I'm multiplying row 2 with minus 3 over 2. So it's 5 over 2 plus 3 over 2 gives me 8 over 2 
which is 4. So there we go. If I had to rewrite this as equations, this just means x1 plus 0x2 is equal to 4. 0x1 plus x2 is equal to minus 1. And I've solved my system. If you want to write it as a solution set, the set of all the solutions, well, this one's a bit boring. It just has one solution, a unique solution. x1 is equal to 4 and x2 is equal to minus 1. But that is how we write it as a solution set. A solution set is sometimes more valuable if I've got an infinite number of solutions. So I can't list them all and I, then it's nicer to generate a solution set. We will look at that in the next video. All right, next one. Now let's make it a bit bigger. Three equations, three unknowns. Just to remind you, we said we can use any number of equations and unknowns. Gaussian elimination will get me there. For the first couple of examples, I'm just looking at things with a unique solution, the same number of equations as unknowns, but there's no restriction. The system will work, and in the next video, we will see how to treat it if it looks a little bit differently. You'll see the process stays the same. It's just the answers that come out are not always the same. It's not always a unique answer. I'm just having my first couple of examples with a unique answer. So where do we start? We start with the augmented coefficient matrix. Why? Because it's easier to use a matrix. I don't even write x, y, z every time. No equal signs. It's much easier. So here we go. The coefficient matrix is 2 minus 4, 6. 1, 2 minus 4, 4, 1, 2. I'm augmenting that with minus 12, 9, 4. So that has all the information is on there that's in my system. So our first step is to get a leading one in row 1, column 1. So I want a leading one here. There. Now, we've got two options. Firstly, I can just work with that row. Or secondly, you can notice that the second equation actually has a leading one, so I can swap the two equations. So if you swap equation 1 and 2, the system still has the same solution. It doesn't change the solution, and then you'll already have your leading one. I'm just going to show you, in case you didn't see it or notice that, if I don't do that, it'll still work out. So I'm going to take row 1 to get a leading one. I'm going to multiply row 1 with a constant, and that's how we get leading ones. We don't use other rows. We only use the row itself. I'm multiplying it with a half so that that first position can be a 1. So 2 times a half is 1, minus 2, 3, minus 6. Row 2 and 3 stay the same. 1, 2, minus 4, 9, and 4, 1, 2, 4. Those stay the same. Yet again, this could be a dotted line. You don't have to draw that line. I'm just putting it there so I can remember that this is an augmented coefficient matrix. So let's get started. What we're doing now? is I've got my leading one in my first column, now I want zeros below it. So I'm going to do both of them. I'm going to now take row 2 and 3 and get those zeros. So row 1 stays the same, 1 minus 2, 3 minus 6. Now row 2, I want a zero there, so I want to use row, do something to row 2. I want to add some multiple of row 1 to it. What multiple of row 1? Well, minus 1. Why? Because I have to add minus 1 to 1 to get zero. So it's always going to be the negative of what's there. So there we go. Add minus 1 row 1, so I get 0. 2 minus minus 2 gives me 4. Minus 4 minus 3 is minus 7. And 9 minus 6 is minus minus 6 is 15. All right, that's row 2. Now row 3, I want a 0 over there. So I must do something to row 3. I must add a multiple of row 1. Always use the leading one to get the 0. What multiple? Minus 4, because if I add 4 to minus 4, I get 0. So in the first position, I'm going to get a 0. I'm going to take row 3 and add minus 4 row 1. So 1 plus 8 is 9. 2 minus 4 times 3 is 2 minus 12 is minus 10. And 4 minus minus 6 times minus 4, so it's 4 plus 24 is 28. There we go. All right, so my first column is done. I've got my leading one and zeros underneath. Now we start the process again. We want a leading one in the next row if possible. So where? Over here. I want a leading one there. So that means row 1 and row 3 stays the same. 1 minus 2, 3 minus 6. And row 3, 0, 9, minus 10, and 28. Row 2 is the one I'm working with. What am I doing with row 2? I'm multiplying it with the right number so I can get a, zero, a 1 there. So that is a quarter. So I get 0, 1, minus 7 over 4, 15 over 4. 
and please keep them as fractions because if you start using decimals you might be risking rounding off and losing value so keep them as decimals so there we go now they're getting a bit ugly but it's not difficult to do calculations and calculators today are working so well anyway so i've got my one now i need a zero below it now eventually we will also need a zero above it so strictly gas jordan elimination tells me first get the zeros below and then in a later step get the zeros above i'm going to do it in the, at the same time because we don't lose any value that way we save a bit of time so now I am saying I'm using my row two to get zeros over there and over there in row one and row three so I must do something with row one add some multiple of row two what multiple two because two plus minus two gives me zero and a row three I must add a multiple of row two what multiple minus nine all right, so one at a time. Row two stays the same. Zero, one, minus seven over four, 15 over four. Row one. I add two times row two to row one. So I get that one, zero, two times row two is then minus 14 over four, plus three, which is 12 over four. So I end up with minus a half. All right. Two times 15 over four is 30 over four. And I've got a minus six. So that gives me six over four or three over two. And you can use your calculator for these calculations. All right, now row three. I've got my zero there. Now I want a zero over here. What did I say? I add minus nine times row one. So that's zero, zero. Minus 9 times 7 over 4 gives me a plus. I have subtract 10 from that, and you should get 23 over 4. Minus 9 times 15 over 4 plus 28. Take some time with that, and you'll get minus 23 over 4. All right, things are looking better. Now, I need a leading one over here, so let's go. I'm going to do something with row 3 to get a leading one. I'm only using row 3. I don't use any of the other rows to get a leading one. Because if you try that, it's going to mess up your other numbers. So I'm going to multiply it with 4 over 23. So row 1 and 2 stays the same. 1, 0, minus a half, 3 over 2. 0, 1, minus 7 over 4, 15 over 4. 0, 0, 1, minus 1. There we go. We've solved for z. z is minus 1. And it's just a coincidence that the last one's value is the same as the previous example. All right. Now our last step is to get zeros above this leading one. So I'm going to do something with row 1 and row 2 to get zeros there. Row 3 I don't do anything with because we've done with row 3. That's in the format we wanted. So, all right. I start with row 1. What am I doing? I'm adding a multiple of row 3. Which multiple? Well, you take a look at what this value is. It's minus a half. So I need to add, add a half times row 3. So let's see. I'll get 1, 0 plus 0 is 0. Minus a half plus a half is 0. And that's a half. So I've got minus 1 times a half is minus a half. Plus one and a half gives me one. And then row two, I need to do something to row two. Add a multiple of row three so that I can get a zero over here. I've got minus seven over four, so I must add seven over four times row, row three. So it gives me zero plus zero, zero. One plus zero is one. Minus seven over four plus seven over four is zero. Multiply minus one with seven over four. It's seven over four plus 15 over four. Gives you eight over four, which is... 8 over 4, which is 2. So there we go. Again, we've got a unique solution, and that will not always be the case. In the next video, we'll see what to do with it if it's not a unique solution. But Gaussian elimination got me to this point. So my solution is then x is equal to 1, y is 2, and z is minus 1. You can write it as a solution set, as in the previous example, but it's the same concept. All right, so Gaussian elimination is a lengthy process. But it is simply just multiplying and adding. That's what we're doing. In the next video, we will look at some more examples on Gaussian elimination.